Hey, welcome to the Closing Beat, everybody. Happy, happy Thursday. This is just a quick show that we do every day for you guys just to talk about uh, stock markets. The good, the bad, the ugly. We'll go over what happened in the markets, drill down to individual sectors, and then talk about individual stocks. And at the end, if you have questions, I'm happy to help you with that as well. Uh, there will be no Closing Beat next Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. I will be out of town, uh, but we'll still have some interesting things uh, being posted on the uh, channel for you. If you're watching this for the first time, we got a game going on here over the summertime. We'll see how well you guys do, but uh, every week you can guess where you think the Dow will close. So if you want to go to that website, the bottom right-hand corner of your um, screen there, you can go guess the uh, closing price of the Dow for next week. Tomorrow we'll be announcing the winner for this week, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Good luck. No strings attached. You just play the game, have a good time. If you're one of our customers uh, tonight, we actually have our class Wine and Wealth which um, will start at 8 o'clock, so we'll get ready for that. Um, if you don't know, we, um, we're financial advisors here, and every week we do a class to just try to teach customers something new, you know, let you guys uh, learn a little bit. The, the topics vary, and they're always available. Of course, you can watch the replay anytime you like. Well, let's talk about the stock markets here today. You got the Dow up 100 points. A lot of that sort of happened right at the last five minutes of the day there. Uh, the S&P added 11. The Nasdaq added 44 on the day. This is exactly what you want, by the way. Let me switch over to the charts. This is exactly what you want to happen after such an incredible run up. We had a very strong sort of V-shaped bottom from coming off of all of May's declines. And we've been talking about this the last couple days saying it's okay if we just slow down, if we just stop here and do nothing. Well, if you you had to measure the performance over the last four days, just this week alone, basically you have sideways, quiet, uh, market taking a breather as the title of this uh, show is today. Uh, the market is marking time, meaning it's like the old uh, military or marching band people where they don't move anywhere, but they're still moving their feet. Things are still getting done, but it's not really making any progress. You love that. I think you really, really love that. Think of the emotion in the stock market right now after such an incredible run up, anyone where, where are the people that have losses? Who has losses in this market so far this year, right? Or even over the last couple of years, it's only such a little bit of a window, right? If you, if someone had invested in the market and never took, never sold, never walked away, there's only a small group of people that still have losses. And if those people are still in the market, they're not really that scared because it's like two and a half, three percent that it's pulled back. So if you happen to invest at the absolute high back here last week uh, in May, May 1st, you invested at the high, yeah, you're not happy, but you're not scared, right? Whereas down here, you might have been a little bit scared. You were down 7%, 8%, maybe, depending on what you chose. So the overall emotion of the stock market right now is, okay, I'm cool to sit back and wait. If you own positions, you're like, great, I like that little bounce there, I'll wait and see what happens. If you happen to have a bad position, you're like, okay, not that big of a deal. Now, think of the catalyst. What's gonna move us higher? When do we blast off from here or when do we collapse from here? What would be the reason? We don't really have any good ones, honestly. We got the G20 meeting at the end of the month. We got the Fed next week, so that could be something there. That'll definitely create some volatility. Um, we don't have any earnings coming up. We're kind of just chopping around here, which is fine, uh, but not a lot really to, to sink our teeth into till we really get into the middle of next week. So uh, that's the S&P 500. You got a touch uh, lower volume than normal as well. That's also just the markets moving into the summertime, so it's not like an indication of, of, of something bad coming. And just typical summertime, lower volume, lower activity. If we look at the Dow, you got about 3.5% till you get back to the highs. That's not too bad. Uh, so same concept here. Marking time, pause, wait, boring, snooze, right? There's nothing to talk about. The markets aren't moving. 3.5% uh, to go. If you look at the S&P 500, um, oh, let's go back here. You got 2.4% uh, until we get back to the high, about 2.5%, let's call it. And the NASDAQ's got about 4.5% to get back to those highs. So uh, we're pretty close. And if you bought the NASDAQ at the highs, right, you're like, okay, not cool. I bought the high, so what? Uh, you're not very scared. So the same comments for that as well. If we look at the S&P 500, you got 57% now above the 50-day. What happened? Just yesterday, we were at 51%, and today we're already at 57 um, well, I think a lot of those were uh, airlines. Did you happen to see some of the airline stocks today? Uh, they had good days. Uh, Southwest Airlines was near the top of the list there, had about a 3% gain closing back above the 50-day. So that's one more S&P stock closing above the 50-day. Uh, if you look at United Airlines, same thing, closing above the 50-day moving average today. Hey, that's another one adding to the list. Well, let's check the rest of them. American Airlines above the 50-day for the first time. So now that adds to our list as well. You're kind of seeing 
the theme here. You guys, you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Uh, you got Alaska Airlines Group's been included in the list here, but it also had a good day so far today. Uh, I'm sorry, it had a good day today. Uh, and Delta Airlines back above the 50-day moving average. So just in one little region of the market, you can see, oh, well, that's why in the S&P 500, we now have more stocks trading uh, above the 50-day moving average. Um, of those stocks, by the way, oh, there goes the golf club. <laughs> so you got uh, 290 uh, stocks that are above the 50-day moving average in the S&P 500. 250 of those are higher by 10% or more. So half of the S&P 500 is currently above the 50-day moving average, as well as higher by double digits. So it gives you an idea. Things are pretty good out there so far, even though they're quiet. And again, that's okay. Quiet is good right now. Um, you got 27 new 52-week highs. Uh, a lot of retail in there. If you're looking at the new 52-week highs today, uh, you notice Walmart. That got a little attention this morning as well. Poked up to new 52-week highs. Under Armour did the same. Uh, both classes of stock, by the way, 2.5% uh, on the day. Um, Costco, whoa, we're just cruising through the charts here. Costco, 1% um, on the day, also hitting 52-week highs. Very strong stock, by the way. And then I noticed Dollar General snuck in there. I thought that was interesting. It's been on a little bit of a tear lately. Um, so a lot of retail names in the 52-week highs. And then you had old Tyson. Tyson bumped up to new 52-week highs. Real briefly, just on some news that now they um, have a plant-based nugget that they're going to be offering. Uh, they've been working on that for a while, so now they're going to go compete with the likes of uh, Beyond Meats. This is, by the way, this is not using Beyond Meats or Impossible Burger. Uh, this is Tyson with their own product, um, which helped put the stock in new 52-week highs, if that helps you. On the 52-week lows, it's the same name. It's been on this list almost all week. Southwestern Energy uh, really just struggling, almost uh, down to being a penny stock here at this pace. So... Uh, that's the only 52-week low on the day. That's not bad. Let's take a look at the overall sectors of the market. Oil, you're going to have oil sharply higher today, at one point up over 4%. Um, I guess Iran attacked some Saudi, um, what was it, a Japanese-based uh, shipping, uh, oil shipping container, two of them actually. Uh, so oil was sharply higher to start the day. It went back and forth a lot. It was awfully volatile um, when the U.S. responded to it. Uh, Mike Pompeo went on and talked about that. So oil had a pretty volatile day today, overall bullish. Uh, Home builders almost near highs there. A lot of the home builders had good days today. About to break to new highs. If you like that sector, you happen to be in that sector, that's looking pretty good. Uh, transports struggling with the 200 day. So you want to see the transports pick up here. This is similar to the comments we had about healthcare last week, where it was like, oh, it's trying to break out of this downtrend, but it has a lot of overhead resistance from other areas that uh, technical areas that traders like to look at. So uh, still currently fighting with that 200 day. Looking better though, had a good day, 1% on the day there. And then you have uh, materials. That sector just won't pull back. Remember last week, this was your best performing sector up about 10%, I believe it was 9.1% uh, on the week. Calm down here, nice and quiet, sitting at highs, just what you wanna see anytime you're in a stock, anytime you're in an index, anytime you're in a mutual fund, anytime you're in an ETF, a sector ETF, uh, Bitcoin, I don't care what you're in. If you see an amazing quick run up, you wanna see pause, calm, quiet. You just wanna see like a nice little thing there. And that's what's happening in the materials, so all's looking good there. All right, let's go over to some individual stocks. Disney was one of the names everybody was talking about today. Almost hit new 52-week highs. Uh, here's your kind of focus symbol of the day. Let's talk about Disney for a second. Added 4.4% on the day. You had uh, Morgan Stanley upgraded the stock to $160 price target, which it looked like it was shooting for today. They previously had a $135 price target, which is where we pretty much closed yesterday. So they had to do something. They put it at 160 and they said, hey, that Disney Plus is going to be big. It's going to bump their overall subscriber count up. Lots of good stuff. They were just really nice to Disney. So Disney is up now just about 30%. It's about 28%. That is the best performance year to date. So from January all the way up till now, that is the best performance year to date since 2000. So if you look back, uh, the only problem with the performance in 2000 was... Um, it gave back all of its gains, right? So, so far, Disney's off to a good start. There's only nine other times in history that it has performed as well as it is so far this year. Sadly, uh, the, the last time it did it, it gave back all the gains and closed negative by a half a percent. Um, 
That's it. That's the only other time. Every other year when Disney was up 28% or more uh, going into the first six months here, it actually closed the um, year positive and by quite a bit to be uh, exact there. So that's Disney. All right, Lulu Lemon. Uh, good strong day today, up 2% on the day. Uh, didn't close near highs. That's not really good. Uh, but Lulu reported uh, earnings yesterday. Very good, by the way. Uh, beat on earnings. They had revenues that were better than expected. And um, overall, they, they guided in line. They don't typically raise guidance. Uh, they haven't had a good history of that. Um, but this is now nine straight quarters of Lulu reporting uh, a beat on earnings and a beat on revenue. So looking really good there uh, on that one. We covered American Airlines. Um, Tesla, uh, maybe some of you are asking about Tesla. So there you go, you got Tesla in the news uh, today. The stock was actually higher a little bit, um, but they're losing their um, autopilot engineer to a startup company who no doubt probably has like, decide he was gonna get like half the equity in this new startup company, something. For a guy like that to leave Tesla, something's going on there. Um, so anyway, stock was a little bit higher. Um, Fiverr went public today, if you like that. They had a good IPO, by the way. Fiverr did, did really well, um, and all the focus now is on um, uh, Chewy.com, which is owned by PetSmart, by the way. It's not like it's its own company, so done a great job with Chewy.com. And now they're going to go public, and everybody wants to get paid. Amazon's going to expand uh, same-day delivery of groceries in the U.K., if you care. Target's decided they're going to uh, do same-day delivery um, for uh, things you order from Target, but you got to pay $9.99 per order. I mean, really, that to me, like, you got all this other good stuff going on. Target trying to get attention with that. I don't, I don't see it there. Anyways, uh, Restoration Hardware beat on earnings, beat on revenue, beat on guidance. Did really well. Stock did well today. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for you. Uh, Garmin's paying a dividend, uh, 57 cents coming up there. So we own Garmin. We'll be getting that dividend. And Lennar upgraded today. That's one of the home builders there. Actually, we're not on that chart there, so we'll just slide back there and uh, take your questions if you happen to have any. Yep, yep. Disney options been crazy. I actually haven't looked, uh, but I, I could believe it there. A lot of adjusting going on there. I think you have expiration coming up next week on uh, oil. I don't know why I was thinking that. Um, yeah, Broadcom reported earnings. Did they miss? Yeah. Not go well for them. Let's see what Broadcom's doing here. That was the real. That was the only one. Earnings season, pretty much done, and especially uh, for the rest of the week, not a whole lot going on there. Broadcom getting a little bit beaten up here after hours, all the way back to the 200-day moving average. Holy camole! Yeah, that's going to hurt the chip space there. So, if you don't know, Broadcom is symbol AVGO. It's currently trading after hours right here at the 200-day moving average. So, a big gap down coming for um, Broadcom. Tomorrow, as of now, I mean, I, that could change, but as of now, looking pretty nasty. Yep. Um, <laughs> you like the uh, Chewy.com there? Built a huge warehouse here in Florida, about middle of Florida there. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you want to look, what do you think about PES? What are you doing with it? Is this one that you're, I don't like these. Is this one that you're trying to, pick the bottom or something. I, this is essentially a dead stock. I I have no, I would never suggest, even if I could tell you what to do with it, I would never suggest you buy it. <laughs> if that helps. I hope you don't own it. Um, Walmart, yeah, new 52 week highs today. It's just a strong stock. It's looking good. Now, however, it's had a great run up, right? So it's done really well over the last like seven trading days. Same thing. Either you want Walmart to pull back quietly and calmly, which it has, it normally does that, or just go sideways because you're not going to get someone to overpay for the stock in a big way. You may have some days that are up and little, little in here, but think about it. The stock is already overpriced in the short term. People want to feel like they got a value. You're going to see it pull back just like it did before, just like it did before, just like it did before. You can see every time when it gets to be overpriced, people wait, let it pull back, then they buy it. Uh, so without having giving you my opinion, you could see it's a little overpriced. If it pulls back, people will be excited to buy it. Mm -hmm. Yep. You like your semiconductors? <laughs> Love it. Uh, yeah, your fake meat company doing well there. Uh, it recovered a little bit today, didn't it? Oh, it actually closed flat on the day. Not, not really that big of a uh, change on the day. It's crazy. Yep. Stefan says, uh, should my wife and I have the same IRA or personal IRA? Um, so the I 
in IRA stands for individual. So you actually don't have a choice. The IRS tells you, you have your own IRA and your wife can have her own IRA. There's no such thing as saying like, we're together on this one. Um, you can have an IRA and your wife can be the beneficiary. She actually has to be the beneficiary, uh, but there's, you, would, you each could have your own. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, <laughs> you have CVX, uh, Chevron. Yeah, is that something you you must uh, you must like the the idea there? I, for me, if you look at Chevron, we made the comments the other day to Jerron, um, but if you look at Chevron in the short term, what's the reason that it goes higher or lower? Like, look at if we look at a chart. If you're just a technical guy and you know, all you want to do is look at the chart. What's the reason it goes higher? Perfectly sideways range. It broke below the range, broke above the range. Everybody's confused. Right? Nobody knows what to do with this stock right now. So what's the reason? Is there earnings coming up? Is there some catalyst? Is there some acquisition? I don't know of any of that uh, coming up. So what happens? There's no reason to do anything new. If you own the stock, you sit and wait. If you're looking to buy the stock, you sort of hope it falls in the short term, right? Because you, you like that you see the dips are getting bought. Uh, but to add more shares at this point, you have no good reason to do it. You can't say it's strong. You can't say it's a dip. Uh, so it's, I hope that helps. It's not really an answer, but it's kind of like sometimes stocks fall into this no man's land. You just put it on a watch list and you come back to it at some other point. Yep. Um, how long the pullback going to continue if President Xi doesn't? Well, he's going to the, the meeting, uh, but he may not meet with Trump. That's sort of the, oh, my God, will they, won't they sort of thing. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yep. We'll see. Um, <laughs> that just caught my eye. Hi from Australia. <laughs> Is there any sector or industry you like at the moment? It depends on what, uh, who you are. And I, I did this yesterday. If you like the, um, the strength, if you like, you know, buying really strong stuff, you're looking at REITs, utilities, um, you might be considering healthcare. If you like weakness and you like buying dips, then you're probably focused on energy, oil, oil services, things like that. So that way I don't have to guess what you like. Like me, I'm a discount guy. I like seeing things fall. I like when people panic and all that. So I look for that sort of stuff. If it's you that you don't like that, that scares you and you want to buy stuff as it's doing well, well, there you go. There's a couple different places you can look, Angus. And thanks for watching all the way from Australia. That's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> Australia, man. I think that's a new one. I've never, never seen someone say that. Thoughts on Church and Dwight's doing well. There's really nothing to say here. Uh, you got a good stock that's performing well, continues to perform well, and no real signs of weakness. So um, that's... Seems pretty clean to me. Uh, when you get married, we're going to make too much to give uh, to an IRA and a Roth IRA any benefit to do a non-deductible IRA or increase our 401k. Um, there's no income limit on the IRA. I think what you mean to say is um, you wouldn't get the deduction. So you're forcing yourself into a non-deductible IRA. You absolutely can. Yeah. Just make sure dot your, e's, or <laughs> dot your I's and cross your T's and you'll be just fine. Yep. Ricardo loves some oil and energy. Nice. Okay. Yep. There's always going to be people on both sides. That's why it like, kind of kills me when people bash somebody for buying a discount and other people get bashed for buying stocks on the way up. There's no wrong way to do it. You got to do what helps you sleep at night. Yep. Any of the IPOs remind you of pets.com? Not even close. I know that's like the joke on Wall Street or getting starting to get to be the joke like, uh oh, we got all these IPOs coming out. They don't make any money. Is this Pets.com all over again? Because you might remember exactly what Pets.com, the date, what that signified if you happen to study that sort of thing. Uh, not even close. Nope. There's not that same number of IPOs coming to the market. Um, granted, it's more money that they're all raising. We could make that argument, but uh, not nearly as many. It's like a tenth less than what we saw during that craze if you're uh, old enough to have been around. How much can a married couple contribute to an IRA? Do you need two accounts? I think I answered that. Um, married couples, if you're filing jointly, you each can have your own IRAs and you each have your max limits according to the IRS, which this year are 6,000 and 7,000. If you're um, over the age of 50, it's the 7,000. If you're under, it's 50. Yeah. Any thoughts on the financial sector? If another pullback happens at the end of the month, um, currently sort of mid-range in, in its valuation, if you look at the large financials, um, I think it'd be fine if financials pulled back. Um, you're going to find out before the end of the month because you got the Fed next week, so uh, you'll probably see a little activity uh, in the financials next week. So 
Um, the good thing is I'll be back Thursday doing a closing beat, so we'll, we'll be talking about it there. <laughs> yep. Um, if you open a Roth at 58, do you still need to wait two years to pull profits, even though it's 59 and a half? If you open a Roth at 58, and let's say you put in $1,000, you can always take the $1,000 back out. Let's say you make $1,000. So you put in 1000 two, three, four, whatever years it is later, you make $1,000. Um, you have to have had the IRA for five years um, to be able to take out the 1000 You can always take your money back. That's the confusing part is a lot of people go, well, I put in money. Why am I going to lock it up for five years when I want to retire at 60? That money you can have back, the, the money that you make has the five-year timeline on it, only for those of you right around that 59 and a half year uh, age. If you're 30, you don't have to wait five years, right? You just, whatever you've got going on, you just, you're going to pay the penalty. I mean, sorry to say. <laughs> so it's five years is the sort of short answer there. Thanks, Zach. Um, with all the golf going on this weekend, yeah, some, so go, go Brooks Kepka, right? Um, with all the golf going on this weekend, do you follow Eli? Uh, <laughs> I used to say Eli Lilly. Um, any of the golf companies, Callaway, I think that was upgraded today. Did I not put that on the list? It may be down at the bottom. I think Callaway was upgraded today. No, there's an a activist investor. Turns out he's got about 19% of the company. I'm going by memory here because I didn't write it down. Um, but that's the reason for the spike on that one. Um, just coincidence that it came out. It, that has nothing to do with... Uh, uh, this week's uh, tournament there by no means uh, that does not happen so if you're thinking like oh do I just wait like till the masters or something and then that's what I do no 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 nope 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 <laughs> all right I appreciate you guys uh giving a nice compliments there there's a lot of them I that I thank you I, that's cool I I love you guys are watching um remember uh no closing beat Monday Tuesday or Wednesday next week. Uh, if you're one of our customers tonight, Wine and Wealth, we're going to talk about how long does it take to recover from losses? And how often will you see losses that you have to recover from statistically? Not opinion. We're going to go through the stats. I'll get back to work and get started uh, making sure that's all ready to go. We'll see you tonight and uh, enjoy. Thanks. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interests comes before ours.